Storil Portugal, the U.S. women leading Portugal on the strength of a 40-second minute strike from Jessica McDonald. McDonald not a guarantee to be on the roster for the World Cup next summer in France. Barring injury, Lindsay Horan pretty much a guarantee. Let's take a look then. U.S. national team midfielder's journey to the 2019 FIFA Women's World Cup. I think a lot of people just look at my decision and they're tired of hearing, oh, this 18-year-old that played pro and go overseas and go to PSG. I just don't think a lot of people understand what it took for me to make that decision and it was probably the most difficult thing in my life. There were moments, there were nights that I was sat up crying and you know, looking at it like, what did I just do? My goal in life was to play for the national team and what was the quickest way to, to get to that level. And I thought that going overseas and playing at the professional level at such a young age was the right thing for me to do. Everyone has different paths. And you can see that with every player on our national team. I just think this was the right path for me. Everything was so hard for me and I kind of cooped up at the very beginning where I didn't put myself fully out there and I think after time I grew to figure out who I was and what I wanted. While I was in PSG it was very apparent that if I wanted to make Olympic qualifying or have a chance at the Olympics like I needed to be in the U.S. It was a better way of the coaching staff here to see me and really evaluate if I can make the team. It's just such a unique city and I think it reminds me a lot of you know my hometown in, in Denver and I couldn't pick a better city to be playing in. My ultimate goal is to make the 2019 World Cup in France. We're just getting better and better. You have to have that in the back of your mind that someone else is wanting your spot and you're not going to let them have it and you just have to keep pushing yourself and if you don't, you can end up not making this roster and I think that's what is just in the back of my mind every single day that I go out and train or go out and play is I should be on that roster so I'm grateful that I'm here and I have the opportunity to do that. I sometimes have to sit back and realize, like, Lindsay, you, you made the right decision and look where you are now. Um, I don't want to sit here and be content with that. I want so much more and I'm so happy that now I have the opportunity to push for bigger and better things. Great work there. You can watch the full episode on Lindsey Horan as well as the entire The Journey series over on ussoccer.com. U.S. leading Portugal 1-0 at the half. Quick break. A World Cup preview when we return. This is a large three-topping pizza from Domino's. You can carry one out for $7.99 every day. This is a three-topping handmade pan pizza from Domino's, and now you can also carry one out for $7.99 every day. This is a logo from Domino's, and this is the end of the commercial from Domino's. Life's more than a race to the finish. It's the power to choose what you do and a trainer for where you go. Welcome to Thailand. Ready to get started? It's having a friend as a partner with a plan built specifically for you. It's someone there for every weight, lift, and crunch. Nice work, you guys. It's motivation, inspiring you mentally and physically, showing you new Not things, easy. and taking you to new places. Because with your let's trainers, go, go. fitness is an adventure. I'll see you again tomorrow for another amazing workout. The X22i from Nordic Track. Your life, your trainers. From the Portuguese Riviera, U.S. women's national team leads Portugal 1-0 at the half thanks to a 42nd minute strike from Jessica McDonald. As we mentioned top of the show, just about seven months until the start of the 2019 FIFA Women's World Cup Doing the drum in roll. France. You ready, Julie Fowdy? I'm ready. So who do you have as your favorites? <laughs> Oh, let's go with our top five, shall we? Okay. Uh, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're not gonna be surprised by the number one that I have, United States of America, Seb. They've been playing so well. Somebody's they, forgotten Brazil. <laughs> they can stay healthy. Uh, I think the U.S. has an excellent chance of becoming back-to-back -back champions. Got nightmares. Number Rio. two on my list, France. Now they've never won a World Cup. We've seen they've had tons of potential. You still have Eugene Le Sommer, as you're seeing there. This and they're hosting. They have a great chance. Australia. 
who we've talked about with Sam Kerr, so good. And if you have Sam Kerr on any team, you're going to be good. So I'm putting Australia in the mix. And although Germany has struggled as of late, lost in the quarterfinals of the European Championship, Germany, as we know, is always one that's in the mix. And my fifth team, I'm going with England. They have in that young player, Nikita Paris, who you're seeing hugging Jill Scott there. Uh, a 24-year-old that is really good up front. And there are your 18 teams of the 24 that have qualified. Three of them, mind you, look at that lot of bottom bullet, bullet, three of them in their first ever Women's World Cup, which is exciting to see. Oceania still has their spot to, to give up. Uh, could be Tom Sermani, ex-U.S. Women's right. National New Team Zealand. coach with New Zealand. Uh, Africa has their three spots. The African Women's Cup of Nations taking place later this month. They'll get three spots in from Africa. Switzerland and the Netherlands are the UEFA playoff that's left. So one spot for those two teams. And then in our hemisphere, Panama and Argentina. Panama fourth place out of CONCACAF. Argentina third place out of Conmebol. The first leg of that series being played today as well. When we return, the second half from Portugal, U.S. on top, 1-0. Stay with us. When Domino's is out for delivery, use Domino's new dinner bell to get the family home. Ring the dinner bell and they'll come running for their mix and match favorites. Choose any two or more like bread twist, specialty chicken, pizza, or salads for only $5.99 each. I'm Tobin Heath, midfielder for the U.S. Women's National Team. It sounds silly, but I've been coached by the best coaches in the world, and my youth coaches still to this day, I think I consider them the best coaches that I've ever played for. I just care deeply about the development um, of youth in, in our countries because I had people that did that for me and like I have to then do that for others. Check out more of my story at CelebratingSoccer.com. Match of 2018, the U.S. women's national team is inching closer and closer to a 17th victory so far this calendar year. Julie Foudy, Sebastian. Salazar with you. They lead 1-0 thanks to Jessica McDonald. Let's take a look back at how it happened. And you're going to see Crystal Dunn, as we talked about at the end of the first half, moves into that midfield. And this is what she brings, a run out of midfield that doesn't get tracked. What a nice ball that is. McDonald doesn't get it on the first sniff, but follows up a bad clear by Portugal, and she makes them punish. Taking a look at the first half stats. The possession tells us one story. The U.S. has been dominant on the ball, 61%. However, and this is a rarity, Julie. Yes, I was just going to say, when is the last time you've seen the U.S. outshot in a half? Can't remember it. Yeah, and, and that's the danger of Portugal. There's, you know they're going to be in this game. They're organized defensively. Whether they can get that rare look, and we've seen them on goal uh, already in that first half getting a couple good chances at the very end, but this is a team that uh, is clearly still in it. Portugal with the 5-4 lead in shots. Julie, I was going to suggest the last time I know the U.S. was outshot in the half. Felt like that uh, 2017 She Believes match at RFK against France. Remember that one? <laughs> yes. I was there. Yes. It was cold, and it was not a, a good day for the, for the U.S. women uh, that afternoon. But, boy, the, the run they've been on since then, uh, certainly quite remarkable. This U.S. program this year has won CONCACAF, World Cup qualifying, Tournament of Nations, she believes. Yep. You gotta go all the way back to the last Tournament of Nations, 2017, Correct. to find their last defeat. Right. Uh, if you wanna talk about momentum being built up ahead of a major tournament, it would seem to suggest that the U.S. is in a pretty good place right now, Julie. Yeah, I, and I agree. And, and I, I do think that the challenge, of course, and this is why they play these type of, of games, right? They're saying, why are you going to Europe? And there may be people out there saying, why are you going to Europe? And, and of course, we're having Alex Morgan 
uh, come in and Calaprico as well. Yeah, this is exciting. Uh, Alex Morgan, we have seen we have seen plenty before. Danielle Calaprico, we have not. Morgan sitting on 97 goals for her career. That's good enough for seventh all time. Colaprico plays for the Chicago Red Stars of the National Women's Soccer League. And if you watch the NWSL, you know exactly who Danielle Colaprico is. You know exactly how good she is. And you have been waiting for this moment. Her shot at the U.S. Women's National Team. And she definitely deserves that, that shot, as you mentioned. Sebastian has done so well for the Red Stars. But back to the point of, you know, there's some people saying, really, they're going to Europe after, you know, the season, what they've gone through, how much they've played. Um, but this is Jill saying, I want to put you in a situation that tests you a little bit. It's a crowd that isn't U.S. friendly. They've been playing a lot of home games. Uh, there's an atmosphere that we talked about that, and especially with the women's game in Europe, is not the same as the energy and atmosphere you get in the United States, and, and so this is another test for the U.S. team. Here comes the United States, start of the second half. Lavelle to Fox on that far sideline. Lavelle looking for a big switch. This one will fall between Dunn and Rapino. And pulls it down, resets through Becky Saubrun. You mentioned the lack of road matches for the United States since early 2015. The U.S. has played 43 friendlies, Julie. 40 of those have taken place in the United States. Only three abroad. This will be the fourth. Great combination play. He's Rapino Street through. Into the box on her left foot. And boy, Lavelle. Knocks it over the bar from about six yards. Tough bounce, but one the smooth left footer will want back. And again, you're seeing Rapino get around that corner. Get in, and we saw it in the first half of that nice ball to Jessica McDonald. Very similar ball, just picking her seam. And Lavelle with that bounce, able to get over it. And at least you're seeing those runners. How often do you see those runners not make those near post runs? So you're getting in a good position. Now the U.S. just has to get better looks on goal. We mentioned Alex Morgan, Danielle Colaprico checking into the match at the half. Andy Sullivan and Jessica McDonald giving way. Couple changes at the break for Jill Ellis. Fox tackled from behind by Silva. And it looks like Crystal Dunn has moved back to that left outside back position. So they're back in a 4-3-3 with Colaprico holding in the midfield there where Sullivan was. Silva going into the book. Set piece coming up here for the United States. The U.S. has scored 23 set piece goals in their last 22 games. That goes back to fall 2017. On those goals, Megan Rapino has featured for nine assists. She could be on the goal scoring end of this one. Dahl Kemper offers up the service. High lofted ball into the box. Headed away. Done. First to it. Wide to Haran. First touch from Pew to Fox. Now Dahl Kemper. Horan. Just saw the feature on Lindsay at halftime. Took the unconventional path to start her career. Hard to say it's done anything but work out for. Yeah, you saw Mallory Pugh, the only two on the national team to have not played in college. She also, after though, deciding to try it at UCLA, opted out. Instead going to play professionally for the Washington Spirit.
Lavelle. Colaprico. Quick passing here from the United States. Dunn still on it. Morgan. Morgan! Shot right at Moraes, who makes the save. And all Alex Morgan needs is just a little half window. She finds herself with a gap here. Good first touch, too. Set up on her preferred left foot. Just doesn't, doesn't get all of it on that one. Injured player down for Portugal. Here's... Lindsay Horan and Vanessa Marquez. Both a bit shaken up. Mm. Never want to see that, do you? Horan checking on her counterpart. Six minutes gone in the second half. Match being played in the Lisbon suburbs. Estadio Antonio Coimbra da Mota. Capacity of about 8,000. Home to GD Estoril Praia. Longtime members of the Portuguese first division, though last season relegated to the second tier. Haran over the top. Dangerous ball. Well done by Marais, way off her line. Reading that one quick. All driven to the area. Done. It's a touch from Megan Rapino. Done, left footed cross. Marais swats at it, Lindsay Horan over the bar. Chances that will not return for the United States. A couple great looks in the opening minutes of the second half. And this is Crystal Dunn again. So good in the attacking third. Just getting by that player, lofted it in, Marais unable to really box it out of there, swats at it. Lucky that Haran didn't punish her for that one. But again, it's Dunn in the, the final third, making things happen. Fifty-third minute. Another attacking half set piece for the United States. Instead of testing the Portuguese area, Lavelle plays it short. Now she's got numbers on that far sideline. Few tried to get in behind. The pass from Fox cut off. Lavelle under pressure finds Pew. Pew passed a couple defenders, poked away. Dolores Silva crunching into that tackle with Rose Lavelle. It'll be Portugal ball. Some players from both sides warming up, among them Emily Sonnet. Sovereign with the clearance. Portugal doing a much better job stringing passes together here in the second half. Mendez. Box well positioned. Olaprico finds Horan. Now wide to Lavelle with space, charging in on the Portuguese defense. She's found the through ball to Morgan. Morgan into the box, offside flag up. Good little gap by Rose Lavelle in between the two seams. We've seen how dangerous she can be when she can get in that seam and start running at that back line.
Portugal. Looks very dangerous at the end of the first half. Seem to have kept that momentum here in the second. Silva pushes past Fox. Silva into the box, stumbles over her own feet. And the U.S. fortunate there. U.S. unable to clear the ball. Alex Morgan will be called for the foul. Uh, she was checking back to help with the defensive effort. And really a, a bit unnecessary because she had caused her to cut. Morgan just continued with her arm grabbing her. I think she had already placed herself securely between the goal and the, the player. We saw Portugal create some issues on corner kicks in the first half. Let's see how dangerous they can be from a set piece. Dolores Silva, the captain, standing over this one. Silva's effort wasted as she sends it well over the bar. Never had a chance, did it? Mm -mm. Not enough pace on it, it's, got, it's not dipping. Portugal applying high pressure. Nair forced into a left-footed clearance. Well done by Crystal Dunn and then Megan Rapino to regain possession for the U.S. Of the 22 players Jill Ellis called into this group, 17 of the original call-ups were part of the group that won the CONCACAF Women's Championship. That number down to 15. Kristen Press, family commitment. Tobin Heath, personal commitment. Both unavailable. Paula Prico working against the official and the Portuguese defense. Center ref, Rebecca Welch of England. Paula Prico. Not a Fox, Fox, time to cross. She'll do so. But the active Patricia Moraes there yet again to corral it and end the American threat. A little bit better by Fox. She's been a little bit hesitant, which is understandable in her first ever cap as a sophomore in college to get forward on the offensive end. So you haven't seen her as much in that offensive third. But you really do need that outside back presence to give you that weak side offensive punch. Flag up for offside. Portuguese attacker couldn't stay. In a legal position, Alex Morgan now off the near post. Not sure that's what she was trying to do, but almost snuck it in there past Morais. And I think Morais thought she was gonna cross, so you can see her sneaking off her line a bit. Maybe Alex just trying to catch her on that near side. Before entering today's match, Alex Morgan in her last 24 games for the U.S., 24 goals. It's a pretty good ratio. Yeah, and, and the, the thing that, I, and why we've talked about 2018 being so successful, one, you have Alex Morgan with such a high goal scoring production rate. Rapino now. Two, look at the CONCACAF qualifiers, which we talked about in the first half. You've got, and we talked about in the open, you've got 10 different players who also scored well, nine others, including uh, Alex Morgan in that CONCACAF qualifiers, those 26 goals. They went 26-0 and 0 in CONCACAF qualifiers, and that is tremendous. 12 of those 26 goals coming from the midfield or defensive players. Rapino corner kick, Lindsey Horan header. Costa heads away, Colaprico on it now. Left it for Pew. Fox to Sauerbrunn, look how high up the field this U.S. formation is. Done, Rapino. Done. 
What a turn. She'll draw the foul on Dolores Silva. Silva catching her jersey, grabbing it a bit. You can see how squirrely it is to contain Dunn. With that low center of gravity, huh? Tough to stop. Think of her now as an outside back, but the goal she scored with the Washington Spirit. Rapino driving this into the penalty spot. Falls to Cola Prico. Portugal the clearance. Dahl Kemper accidentally finds Dunn. Now Rapino. Fired it at Dunn, unable to keep control, and Portugal will build up down the right flank. Here's Silva, one on two. She thinks better of that matchup. Now does run it, Dahl Kemper. And will win a throw. Mendez looking for Silva. Mendez wins it back. Ambitious <laughs> efforts on the left foot there will not trouble Nair at all. A reminder, ESPN2, you're home for the USL Cup tonight, 8 Eastern, defending USL Cup champs Louisville City FC, hosting Didier Drogba and Phoenix Rising from Lynn Stadium in Louisville, Kentucky. The match streaming live on the ESPN app as well. Moran challenged by Silva. Silva, number 14 for Portugal. Dolores Silva putting in quite a shift in that midfield today. Couple subs for both sides here. Portuguese attacker. Carolina Mendes leads the match. Replaced by Andrea Norton. Very dangerous attacking player in her own right. Meanwhile, Emily Fox comes off. Carly Lloyd comes on for the U.S. Far from a like-for-like -like substitution, Julie. <laughs> Let's see what this means here. Lloyd on 105 international goals. from Carla Costa. So it looks like they'll probably put, I'm guessing, Carly Lloyd in that attacking number 10 position. So, and no one will swap out to outside back. So you're looking at a 3-4-3 again as they finish off the end of the first half. Dunn was in the midfield in that one. Now it's just Lloyd adding that extra midfield player. Jessica Silva looking for Diana Silva up top for Portugal. The two unable to connect. And Jessica Silva here on the near sideline has been a handful for the U.S. defense. Colaprico on the ball. Now Saubron and Dahl Kemper. Space opening up for the United States. 65th minute. Ball driven in, knocked out, corner kick coming. What will her role be in France? An important question for fans and manager Jill Ellis alike. Cross into the box. I think it will be just like this, what you're seeing. And, and that's the power of having a finisher like Carly Lloyd come with fresh legs off your bench. She'll be 36, almost 37 at this next World Cup. I think she would concede 
Nah, she probably wouldn't concede this because, you know, Carly, she, <laughs> she wants to play every minute. Right? Going 90 for all those games is is probably not the wisest decision on her body, but she just brings such a goal-scoring presence in the end of games. Lavelle on it for the U.S. Rafino the cross, well challenged by Monica Mendez. Rapino, Haran, Pugh, all in tight quarters on the near sideline. It's the Portuguese that not only win possession, but now maintain it. Norton, ahead to Silva. Salbrun says, I got all ball. And the center ref agrees. And Portugal knowing they have a couple fresh legs on there, knowing they're very much in this. They're organized defensively, as we talked about. I mean, the challenge has been for them can they get any type of offensive no, go, 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 movement go. happening and momentum in that attacking third for them? Done. Long ball out of the back. Haven't seen that too much from the U.S. today. Tatiana Pinto. Quick by Lavelle. Foul on the United States. The Cincinnati kid, Rose Lavelle. Again, you can hear Nair organizing her defense in front of her. Andrea Norton. Driven into the box. Lavelle chested it down. Brief shouts. Perhaps an appeal from the near sideline for a handball. Colaprico clattered into by Dolores Silva, foul against Portugal. Great article on EqualizerSoccer.com from John Halloran on Colaprico. Moraes, well off the line there, couldn't keep control of it, but able to beat Carly Lloyd to the ball. Momentarily thwart the U.S. attack. And if she just got, she was trying to get just a little bit of touch on that. Marais has been very aggressive off her line, so you don't have a lot of time and space when you do get in behind. Colaprico, part of the U.S. Under-23 program. with Chicago since 2015, 25 years old, as Crystal Dunn in the near corner is called for the foul. Well done by Silva to just get that little touch in as Crystal's reaching. Interesting, you can hear the instructions, corner like a corner. I wonder if they're setting it up effectively as though they're defending a corner kick here. Slightly different angle, slightly closer. And it'll be Norton again to offer delivery. 69th minute, U.S. up 1-0. The goal coming end of the first half, Jessica McDonald. Confusion in the box. Nair hesitant off her line and the U.S. dodges a bullet. And this again, it's just there's this little hesitation with Nair. And, and maybe it's a lack of communication with that back line, but you can see Sauerbrunn's clearing the path for her to come. And Nair just a little hesitant to get in there. Fidalgo pushing up field. Now Silva. Silva one on one with Sauerbrunn. Decides to get fancy. Norton lays it off. Beautiful work from Portugal. Marquez cleared away by Dunn. U.S. defense backs against the wall. 20 minutes to go. 
Portugal turning up the pressure. The home side looking more and more confident as the match wears on. Space here for Mendes. Again, the distance shooting of Portugal. Not enough to trouble a listener. Horan not happy with the referee over that one. You can see her limping along there. And I think about the minutes she's logged for both club and country this this year alone. When you saw about two minutes into the match, she was already getting yeah. bandaged up. I mean, she's a yeah. physical, physical player. Her minutes are not easy or light minutes. Yeah, and I think you're going to see right now or soon a substitution for a Haran or a Rose Lavelle with maybe, maybe a Sonic coming in at that outside back position so that they're not playing in a three back. Dunn looking for Morgan. And the offside flag has gone up. Oh. It's as if we were there. Did Jill te just text you that? I think, I think so. <laughs> Here it comes. And you can see the, mo the momentum from Portugal's side with that three back, having a little more success, stretching them. So no surprise she's going to, Jill Ellis is going to shore that up a little bit with Sonic coming in. And Sonic's a player that's so fun to watch. I, you know, I was actually surprised that she went with an Emily Fox in that starting role over an Emily Sonnet, Sonnet or Meredith Mathias coming off. And maybe it's just to rest them after two very good seasons. Because both of them had an excellent season. Bad turnover here from Portugal deep in their own end. But Pew couldn't decide what to do with it in the end. Tried to find Alex Morgan, but the pass arrived. <laughs> Looks like it will be. Mallory Pugh gives way to Emily Sonnet. So that'll be Pugh's final touch of the match here in Portugal. She didn't text me the player. She gave me the wrong player. Classic Jill. <laughs> <laughs> Sonic comes on, member of the Portland Thorns. 2018 NWSL runners up. LaBelle, boy, they're giving her so much space. Even as she crosses into the final third. LaBelle on that left foot. Dahl Kemper, Sauerbrunn. Sauerbrunn in some trouble. As again, Silva there to apply the pressure. This works out of it though. As we approach the quarter hour mark. 15 minutes to go, just about, between the US and Portugal. Morgan in behind Alex Morgan, shot saved on ice. And cleared away, the Portuguese goalie having herself a game. Done, wheels, turns into the box. Nearly picked out, Morgan Mendes clears away. Oh, Morgan just had to get a little touch on that one. And look at how Morgan just bodies herself in here. That is the experience of knowing I just got to get in between her and that ball. Bodies herself in there, and what a save by Marais. Rapino the corner into the near post. Headed away by Norton. U.S. still with it. Sonnet and Horan. Player game on the far flank. Resetting with Sauerbrunn. She wants Rapino. The near sideline defended well by Fidalgo. Jill Ellis looking on. So many decisions to make between now and next June.
and the importance of that save and those types of saves by a goalkeeper in that moment. Now this is still a game for Portugal. That goal goes in. Moraes doesn't make that save, and that's a gut crusher. Morgan, one-on-one, -on -one, under the left foot. Had a couple options in the middle. Rapino and Loy, now Morgan. I thought chopped down, and she thought she was chopped down. Instead, the foul will go the other way. <laughs> Little twist or tangle there. Monica Mendez doesn't mind the call. The Audi 2018 MLS Cup playoffs on ESPN continue Sunday. With a leg two doubleheader on the conference semifinals. First three Eastern Sporting Kansas City hosts Real Salt Lake from Children's Mercy Park in Kansas City. The series tied 1-1 on aggregate after the first leg. That game followed by another leg two conference semifinal, 5.30 Eastern Atlanta United, New York City FC. Atlanta the lead on aggregate. In that series, both matches streaming live, of course, on the ESPN app. Back to the matter at hand. Rose Lavelle looking for that near post where Morais safely gathers. Done, well won, finds Rapino. Rapino and Morgan, nice one, two. Rapino into space. Rico wanted Morgan. Timely intervention there from the Portuguese defense. Five, five. Not long before the United States wins possession right back. Long outlet from Morais, the Portuguese goalie. Norton going to be called for the foul here on Colaprico. Pretty easy call that one. Mentioned the Women's World Cup starting next June 7th. Late October, FIFA Council voting to up the prize money for the Women's World Cup from $15 million to $30 million. Might seem like a nice increase until you read that the men's prize money went up $42 million up to $400 million. So the pay gap has actually increased in the year 2018. The total prize money for the women less than 10% the prize money for the men. Colaprico to a wide open Lindsay Horan. She's found Carly Lloyd, the glancing header. Off target, offside flag up anyway. Just trying to run that line. Good call by the referee, clearly off. Carly always hungry to find that gap and seam and we've seen how good she is in the air with her head over the years. Back to the uh, bonus money, mm -hmm. Sebastian, uh, the payout for winning the World Cup. You know, one of the things that I think is so frustrating for the players, and you saw some of their comments after that, I think FIFA was probably surprised by it, right? Because it wasn't like, oh, thank you. It was like, no, that's not okay, right? That's not enough. Uh, and, and I think part of that that gets lost in the discussion. Silva had a chance there. Nervous moment from Sonnet just into the match. Couldn't quite clear it. Silva, Norton. Norton cutting on to her left foot. The shot. And again, another effort from distance for Portugal, but another easy save for Alyssa Nair. Lost in that is the argument that always is made, well, there's not the same market. There's not the same revenue for the women, right? Which, of course, there's not. Because, you know, as we have argued for many years, FIFA 
uh, has not built up that market. Yeah, that's why. Right. Yeah, 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 that's why. And, and FIFA's job is to invest in the market. And so I think that's the main frustration is what are you doing as FIFA to invest in growing the game commercially and marketing it and ensuring that all these member associations are actually putting that money to use and funding girls programming and grassroots programming. And I think that's where the frustration is and that's where the lack of market return is as well because there just hasn't been the energy expended or the investment expended to do it there. We should also know, Julie, we talk a lot about the National Women's Soccer League. FIFA has, for the first time, approved $8.5 million in payments to clubs for players who are participating in the Women's World Cup. It's something they do on the men's side. Uh, in fact, the men, I think the, the total bill for 2018 was something like $209 million. Uh, it'll be $8.5 million, but when we talk about women's clubs across the world and their budgets, that $8.5 million for some clubs could be relevant. It could be, but... I mean, it's, it's pathetically small compared to the right. 209. That's the overall point, but it's a it's a source of income that the women's club teams have not had in the past. Yeah, but I just don't feel like there's any checks and balances on these federations in terms of how you're investing and what you're investing and, and accountability to that, right? It's one thing to give federations some money or clubs some money, but how are you spending it, especially at the federation level, because you often see they are not spending that money that's supposed to be going to the women's side on the women's side. Substitute coming here for the United States. It'll be Rose Lavelle leaving the field. Maybe good minutes in the center of the park for the U.S. side. And as Rose gets her fitness back in, see Julie Ertz coming in for her. You know, it's incremental. It, when she first came in, it was, I think she can go 45. Now that she's up to 80, that's a great sign for Rose Lavelle. You can see the fatigue setting in in these last 10 minutes of the second half here. See Julie Ertz checking into the match. I don't know if you agree with this, but it's so hard for me to think of a player who's more important to next summer for this U.S. team than yeah, us. Yeah. And you could also argue that change in terms of their 26 unbeaten streak happened when they switched Julie Ertz into that holding central midfield position. I mean, that's when this team started to make that turn. And they realized the energy and the bite and, and also not on just defense, offensively what she's been given to this team on both sides of the ball. Hurts on it now. I mean, how about she's MVP of CONCACAF qualifiers and four years prior, <laughs> she only got placed on the roster as a substitute for an injured Crystal Dunn, didn't even get a play. Carly Lloyd, nice move, beautiful cross, falls to Dunn, first touch, second touch. Oof, had Golasso written all over it. But the Portuguese defense slides over to block the effort. Just been a little bit sloppy in front of goal. Getting a couple good licks and some half looks. All right, 84th minute, just the one goal from Jessica McDonald to show so far here for the U.S. Lindsay Horan knocks down the header, and here's a chance for a break for Portugal. And who else would you rather have on it than Jessica Silva? She's been dangerous all night. Here she is, one on four, though. Great cutout from Colaprico. And now the U.S. can make Portugal pay for their aggression going upfield. Rapino. Ross is back, Costa the clearance. Colaprico wins it right back for the U.S. She'll spray it wide here. Emily Sonnet, acres of space in front of her. Driven ball into the box. Couldn't clear the Portuguese defense. Oh, clever touch from Silva. I gotta say, I'm impressed with this Portuguese team. It's hard for me to imagine that they finished third in their group. Right. It's a good squad. And, and they, as we mentioned, they're missing Definitely their best player in Neto, and, and maybe their second best player in Borges. 
Rapino brings it down. Horan, oh, she wanted Morgan. Yeah, you thought with their group, too, Italy and Belgium were the ones above them, that they might have a chance of getting through. And Italy, one of the first, if not the first, to secure their passage from, from UEFA, from Europe. Five minutes left in regulation. It's felt like one-way traffic for a lot of this match, but this is still a one-goal game. What a monumental result this would be for Portugal if they were able to find a late equalizer. And it's a program on the rise, but one which has never qualified for a World Cup. Silva out of the match. She was replaced by Anna Leita. Norton to the spot. All back across. Nervous minutes here for the U.S. Got to see this one out now. There's Fatima Pinto there. Another Portuguese player to check in. And Portugal very much in this still, in large part thanks to Marais in goal. And what a huge game she's had for them. Ball back and forth before Norton grabs a hold for Portugal. Ertz wins it right back for the U.S. Sonnet. Pumps the brakes as the U.S. Sets up some possession in their own half. Shouts for a handball from the Portuguese players. Those shouts ignored. Our center ref. Dahl Kemper, well intercepted. Does even better to pick out Horan. Ertz. Sonnet. Now Ertz. He's stuck in a one on two on the far sideline, but the American midfielder. Manages to maintain possession. U.S. with a throw in 88th minute. And you look at this score line. Clearly, the U.S. has had probably more of this game, but this has been this has been one that's been kept tight because of Portuguese organized defense. And they're going to come against a really good team in Scotland as well. You know, Kim Little, of course, with the Scottish team in their next game. It, a two-game series that's going to test the U.S., and this is exactly what Jill Ellis wanted. Are they going to be happy if they walk out of here 1-0? For sure, but they're going to think there's more that we left out there on the table. Not as sharp in front of goal as we've seen this U.S. team. Not as sharp in the attacking third as we've seen this U.S. team, but that happens when you're trying to rest and balance the time for some of these players. You mentioned Scotland, Scotland, Chile, Panama, uh, excuse me, Jamaica, the three first-time teams we'll see in France next summer. Panama could join that party. They're playing Argentina. The Conmebol CONCACAF playoff first leg today. Rapino into the box. Ertz the header. Morais the save. And I think the key for this U.S. team as they get through this Scotland game is, I would say, shut it down in December, right? Take a rest. Let that body recoup and recover, mentally and physically. I mean, it's going to be another crazy busy year. They go to Europe in January next year. So December has to be a month of rest. Dunn continuing to look for Rapino. Silvia Rabello slides over to knock that out of play. 
U.S. on the front foot for most of this match. A few nervous minutes at the end of the first half. Some nervous moments also at the beginning of the second half. As Portugal came close to an equalizer a couple times. Salbrun. Horan over the top. What a ball to Lloyd. Might have had more time than she thought. The idea was there. She was just trying to give it a little deflection, knock it off course. Just couldn't pull that off. Not the first time that Lloyd's gotten in behind during this match. Only been on for a few minutes. Ball poked ahead to Leiter. Just off the bench, the German-born forward for Portugal. Three minutes of stoppage time, what we'll get in Estoril, suburb of Lisbon. This match being played in the Portuguese Riviera. Estoril, a place of luxury hotels and entertainment. Somewhere Julie Foudy would find herself right at home. <laughs> uh. U.S. looking to hold on for what would be a 17th victory so far this calendar year. They are 16-0-2, undefeated in 2018, your U.S. women's national team. And not a free kick they want to give up at this point in the game. Jessica Silva, one of the more dangerous players for Portugal. She'll be in the box. As Tatiana Norton drills it into the wall. Touch from Lloyd. And she'll get the foul call here. Silva making the case that she got the ball. But it will stay with the U.S. Shouldn't be much time now. Three minutes of stoppage time and we are into the third minute. Well into it. Listen there, working on a shutout. She gets this as far away from her goal as possible. Does Portugal have one last chance in them? Not much time to find out. This ball played well over the head of Hidalgo. And that may have been the last chance for this Portuguese side to push into the American half. And there it is, the final whistle from Estoril. The U.S. women's national team, one nothing victors over Portugal. The goal coming in the 42nd minute from Jessica McDonnell. We'll be back in just a minute to wrap things up. Nothing on aggregate after leg one. Both matches streaming live on the ESPN app. As for the action today in Estoril, the United States tops Portugal 1-0, staying unbeaten on the calendar year. Jessica McDonald, the game-winning goal for Julie Fouty. I'm Sebastian Salazar. Thanks for watching. Coming up next, it's NFL Live.